So we are talking about making your thumbnail sketches for Proving Ground 2 in the last video. Once you have your sketches and once you have posted them, like I have here, then you need to comment on another student's posts and let them know which one you think would be most has the most uh, potential to be a good finished logo. Remember, that's clear, engaging, and versatile. So I asked uh, your input from the class, and of these kind of tattoo-themed versions of Nico the Nighthawk, some sort of graphic symbol with my own taste. I, I can't think of a better way to think of it being in your own taste than if you would tattoo it on your own body. We identified this dynamic one as being the one with the most potential. So now I'm going to take that dynamic one. I'll just make a quick screen grab of it here. And we're going to work up a refined sketch for it. Because once you post your sketches and then post your comments, and I know some of you are improving your sketches, you can post those improvements, then you can move on to the assignment for proper, the last thing in the unit. And this is where we'll post a refined sketch, our finished black logo, and then a color version of our finished logo. Right. This was a mashup of Colonel Sanders with a zombie. Just like we're mashing up Nico the Nighthawk with our own taste, our own ideas. Like this was mashing up, and this was called uh, Angry Elementals theme and mashed up a, a water molecule with this expression, this kind of angry emoji. So the first thing I need to post is a refined sketch. Not just my thumbnail. So how do I get there? Well, now that we know the approach that we're going to use, my refined sketch needs to come from this approach. And one easy way to do that is to open it in Photoshop. And I have my tablet. I'm going to build on top of it with a new layer. It doesn't need to be, this is just a screen grab, so it's low resolution, but that can work fine as a refined sketch. And now I'm just going to use black ink. And I'm going to use a regular soft pressure sensitive or maybe even a hard pressure sensitive brush. Maybe I'll take it to about 70% hardness. It's a little bit smaller here. And on this layer, oh, I want to go to full opacity. I'm just going to start filling in what I think the shape would be. So this is one way you can do it. You just kind of sketch it in roughly. I would have this, what's called full bleed, as solid black. I'll show you another way after this, which in my case would be a little bit cleaner. But it just helps you understand, if you were to cut this out of black paper, what would be the cuts? Remember, we don't want it to just be line-based. We need it to be shape-based. That's what vectors are. We're going to be doing vector line art for our next project for illustrations. But these are logos. These need to be a lot more versatile than that. And you'll see that there's a few choices, a few ways I can go with this. I could kind of cut out those lines there. So that's one approach. Well, that's the logo, where I, I intentionally kind of cut out that head shape so that it kind of looks a little bit like a skull and a little hard-edged, but everything else just gets filled in. Another way, I can do this on an additional layer, is I can swap the color of the eye and make this a white dot within, keep that stripe there, but make the head black. 
So those are two options. All of them come from the same thumbnail approach. Which one is more versatile? You know, works at a better size. And sometimes you just can't tell until you see it. So I actually think that one is my preferred one. What do you guys think? That or this? So you think about how it's cut out. And honestly, the simpler it is, like the easier it is to cut out with an X-Acto knife from black paper is usually the better logo. So you want to simplify a lot. So this would be my refined sketch. Another way I could play with that that you might find useful is to take your sketch, as long as they're contained shapes, make a duplicate of it, go to image levels, adjustment levels, really brighten it, really darken it. <laughs> right. Kind of cleans up your, your sketchy lines. If you sketch digitally, this can be a little bit cleaner. Then go in and any gaps that might be there, you fill in with your black brush. Bless you. So I'm going to do this with a, a very hard brush. And now, because I kind of know what I want, I'm just going to use my paint bucket and fill these shapes in. And then, if I want to get really refined, I can use my my lasso and make little cuts, just like an X-Acto knife, kind of deleting away. So if I want to open up this stripe on the throat, I can do that. If I want to cut into this a little bit, I can do that. I want to slim it down here. This does not need to be clean, but it needs to be a clear approach before we try to make a vector of it. And that's the next step. So the problem with drawing with pencil, I say it's a problem just because it's unclean. I actually like kind of the fuzziness of it because it requires me at this stage now to make cleaner decisions. But the problem could be that a soft edge is not what vectors are. <laughs> Pencil gives you a soft edge. You have to go in and then define them. Clean them up. Just like I can cut out with the, the lasso, I can also fill it with black within the lasso. So this is a lot like... Oh, I want to fill with black. A lot like cutting it with an X-Acto knife. Let's clean up some of these triangles. Because there's no inside or outside, there is just a black shape that we're making. And then the challenge is how to make that into a clean vector. I can see what it looks like with an open crown, and I don't like it. I want to fill that crown up. Come on. Use my paint bucket. Just fill that in. Make sure that curve is present. This was something clever that I discovered within, that I thought was clever, that I discovered while sketching. To make the crown dynamic, I just leaned it to one side. Because I have a very dynamic bird, all diagonals and curves. But then when the crown is straight up and down, it kind of slows the eye. Remember, you want to avoid horizontals and verticals. So that's the only vertical I have in the design. Or not vertical. That's the only horizontal I have in the design. I don't think I have any verticals. 
And so then even though we think of crowns usually as being kind of symmetrical, it still reads if it's tilted this way. Which I was pretty happy with. And it can be really little simple things that make your design unique. So now I'm going to flatten this. And that's what I need for a refined sketch from you. I need clear understanding of what the black shapes are and then what are the empty spaces. Just like if you were cutting it out. Doesn't mean it needs to be super clean. That's why I'm keeping it at low resolution. I'm not trying to make a logo in Photoshop here. I'm trying to get my approach. And then I also want that curve to be a little bit cleaner on the back. Yeah, I think I do want that. All right. So now I'm going to save that. Just as a JPEG, I flattened it. I'm going to call it, this is now assignment four. It's no longer my proving ground. My sketches were my proving ground. SP23-1, Carl. Assignment four, refined sketch. This is my logo approach for my black shape logo. I'll keep it as a PNG, but it could also be a JPEG. Remember, if you took out all the white, you would still have a very recognizable image. This is just a one color image. And now I can post that as my refined sketch. So what is the difference between your best thumbnail and your refined sketch? Even if your best thumbnail is incredibly close, your refined sketch shows how it will be put into practice. And notice that when you treat it as black shapes, it will be recognizable even at very, very small sizes. Whereas your line art loses, loses out. So it's always good to do that little test, zooming in and out. That, I can still see it. I can't tell what it is, but it has that graphic mark. I have to take it up to this point for my eyes to be able to tell what it is. But this one, I can't even see it. And then I bring it up to here, and I still don't know what it is. And I bring it up to here, I still don't know what it is. And I can't recognize it until it's this size. So this one is more versatile. Okay. Next... is our black shape vector using our new program, Adobe Illustrator. So that's what comes next. So to do this, I'm going to open up my refined sketch in Illustrator. So whether it's a JPEG or a PNG, that's a raster image, that's a pixel based image, but we can open it as a guide within Illustrator. So I right click and I say open with Adobe Illustrator. I can also drag it right onto the icon in my dock for Adobe Illustrator, which is the orange AI. We'll open up like this. Some of you have 2023 already. When, when it comes in, it's going to look a lot like Photoshop, but this is not Photoshop and this does not work like Photoshop. Though it is handy that we will have layers at the side. So this is our first layer. Just keep it at its default size. Remember, resolution does not matter within Illustrator. But this white space, this is called the artboard. What's handy about it is if I take it off of the artboard, I'll see if I am truly cut out or not. Right now you see a full grid of white and black pixels and some gray pixels. And that's on this layer. So within the layer is what's called an image file, not a vector. What I'm going to do